with one spirit and one heart. We thank you this morning, Lord. May everything we do bring you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may take your seats, everybody. God bless you. Uh, you've been standing for so long, we apologize. Uh, but God bless you. Say praise the Lord. Once again, I welcome you, and we're glad that you are here. Uh, it's good to see you all. Uh, after they open the churches uh, to more people, uh, it's exciting to have you back. How many of you are back for the first time since the last lockdown? Anybody back for the first time in church? Okay. Oh, they're in the back. Yes, Lazarus and his family. Uh, we welcome you. Uh, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Wonderful. And then uh, we have visiting with us today, we have Mr. Reg Thomas, his beautiful wife and family. Uh, let's give them a nice round of applause. And we also have uh, Reggie and his family there. Uh, let's give them a nice round of applause. We're glad that you are here. Thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, God bless you. Also, uh, welcome to our online viewers. I think we are online. We are. Yes, uh, so uh, welcome to all of you at home. Uh, we're glad to uh, be with you this morning. We pray that you'll be blessed and enjoy the meetings and that God will bless you. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, it says in everything, give thanks to God. It says rejoice always, pray without ceasing in everything, give thanks for this is the will of Christ Jesus uh, concerning you. In all your circumstances, all that you're going through, all your difficulties and challenges, just give thanks to God. Uh, you'll see that as you have a heart of thanksgiving, uh, that God will continue to bless you. He is faithful, amen? God is faithful. You've come this far, almost one year. Is it one year? One year since the March that uh, we all were shocked. We stocked up on toilet roll. We stocked up on other stuff. One year, and uh, God has seen us through. Of course, there are those who we've, who we've lost, uh, and we pray for them and their families. Uh, but you are here, and uh, look, be optimistic, and uh, trust God, be faithful, trust God, get everything back on track. Uh, God will help you in the name of Jesus. We're glad to invite you, and uh, we pray that you'll be blessed here at this church. Those of you at home, uh, God bless you, and put some clothes on as well. But then also, uh, please remember a few announcements before I hand over to Dad. Remember that uh, we're starting our Bible school again. Uh, look, we have to get back to normal life or some sort of normal life. Uh, and so we are starting our Bible school program tomorrow. Uh, that's at 7 p.m. You're welcome. To, uh, you have to register as well. And then also remember that our men's fellowship is also beginning. 
uh, there's just one uh, category or qualification for men. You must have uh, lovely, strong arms for, uh, to join the men's fellowship. And so you welcome all men. Uh, you are welcome to join. That's on the 26th, uh, Friday or 26th. You can see Sean and Diren uh, for more details. They'll to tell you uh, a bit more uh, about that later on. But yes, God bless you. And uh, over to you, Dan. Thank you very much. Morning, everybody. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. We, we're delighted you are here this morning. Morning, Pastor Brian. Morning, Pam. God bless you. We're happy that you are here with us this morning. Uh, Pastor Brian is with us, and this morning we're thankful to God for him and for Pastor Noreen and their family and um, all that they have done to make us comfortable and to receive us as we've come here. I think it must be four months now. Four, five. Yeah, time is gone. Amen. Amen. So good morning, everybody. God bless you. Online viewers as well. God bless you. Pranesh is not here, so we can't scold anybody. The only fellow we have here is Lyndon. If we scold him, we'll have nobody doing the sound. So the Lord bless you. So don't forget, Pastor said, told you about the apostolic school starts tomorrow. Uh, come in for registration. Anybody can come. There's orientation. You can do that as well. Roland and his wife, Natasha, I saw them running on the beach yesterday. Uh, good. Uh, they lost a lot of weight since I last saw them. Anyway, all right, so you can visit. Church office is open. Please remember that. There's some stationery available, lots of books down there in the hall. You can get that, and it's free of charge. You don't have to sell that. Tonight, we're going to be at 5 o'clock. Please come. We're trying to encourage the people who don't come in the mornings to come here in the evening, and you can come. The service lasts for an hour. Please remember that. And then uh, may the Lord bless you. I want to thank the management committee. They have been so good during the pandemic. They did a marvelous job, and they're still here. Please give them a good round of applause. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. And then to all of you who are watching us by live stream and others who are here, you know, um, businesses have shut down. A lot of churches have closed down. A lot of things have happened. But, you know, we have been going on all of this time only by the grace of the almighty God. So come give the Lord a praise offering. You who have been supporting us, sending your tithes and your offerings, please continue to do that. You can even do that online uh, where you are. You have your, uh, the banking details there. And this morning, I pray the Lord will bless you. Charles is with us this morning. Give him a good round of applause. Amen. And Reg Thomas, what can I say? Reg and his lovely wife, Solosh. Your son is here? Ben is here as well? Ben and Sarah are here. Please give them a good round of applause. Reg Thomas is a dear friend of ours, dear friend of ours. In the darkest days of our lives, Reg was there. We fought with lions and beasts. I can tell you, an uncircumcised Philistines. Well, how we knew, we just knew they were uncircumcised. So, yeah, so we, we, we just knew that. So we fought with them all, but Reg has been good to us. Thank you. We honor you as a family member and a part of the church. So everybody, happy birthday. God bless you. And um, I, we have a gardener comes on, uh, on Fridays. And uh, then we are, our maid, I gave them a lift to the bus shelter yesterday. And I said, aren't you worried the king is, has passed away? They said, who cares? Now, uh, uh, the king passed away. Goodwill, Zuletini, uh, Becky Zulu, he passed away. So we honor him. We respect his memory. He's a good king, very, very good king. So uh, we have kind words for him and pray the Lord will bless the, the, his descendants and everybody else. The Lord bless you. So I've heard an interesting story the other day. A boy came to the house to propose wants to marry the young girl. So the father of the girl said, I want to meet him. <laughs> and he met the boy. He asked him, he says, uh, okay, you want to marry my daughter? I asked, do you work? He said, no, I don't have a job. He said, do you have a car? He says, no. So how are you going to provide for my daughter? He said, God will provide. Then he said, do you have a car? He says, no. He said, God will provide. He said, how are you going to maintain my daughter? He said, God will provide. Then he asked, where are you going to live? The fellow said, God will provide. He called his wife. He said, I'm worried about this fellow. He thinks that I am God. So, <coughs> so. all right, so <laughs> check them up. The prerequisite for anybody wanting to marry your son or daughter, speak in tongues. So let's read the word of the Lord this morning. Bless the Lord, 
Oh, my soul. Amen. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 11. We have some time and we're going to speak to you out of the word of the Lord. Romans chapter 8, verse number 11 is what we begin with today. And we're continuing. I started on, the, on three weeks ago. I began when we closed the fast. We started with the word of the Lord. We talked about the Holy Spirit. And we said you get the power of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. And then last week, we talked from 2 Timothy chapter 1. We talked about the stirring of the Spirit. This morning, there's a profound word which you need to listen to. It says, but if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the Spirit who dwells in you. Then verse number 14 says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You did not receive the spirit of bondage to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. And if sons, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. Beautiful words. I want you for a moment to, if you can, I know you've stood a lot. Say, stand and sing with us, I have a father. Come on, and let's bless him this morning. If you're uncomfortable, you're tired, you just remain seated. It's fine now. I have a father. Hallelujah. pray together this morning as Jesus taught us how to pray by saying our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may take your seats. I mentioned that we began a few weeks ago and we talked about the rushing mighty wind, the sound from heaven and the cloven tongues of fire. And last week we, began, we talked about 2 Timothy 1. Paul said, store up the gift that is in you. We're going to continue. And today's reading says that for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, it says we are the sons of God. And it says we receive the spirit of adoption. The New Living Translation says all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. The word for children and sons is the same Greek word which is huios. The New Century Bible says the true children of God are those who let God's spirit lead them. And the Dua Reims Bible says this. It says Whoever, for whosoever are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God. The Message Bible says God's spirit touches our spirits, confirms who we really are. We know who he is and we know who we are. And the Bible's talking about sons of God. I want to get on 
with the subject this morning very quickly. And we know about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We know about the gifts of the Spirit. We know about the stirring of the Spirit. We know about signs and wonders. Everybody talks about that and thank God for that. But there is one work of the Holy Spirit that is neglected and that's what I want to dwell on this morning. And these, this thought is contained in the verses that I read. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 14, whoever is led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You see, you got the Holy Spirit, you got the gifts of the Spirit, and that's fine, you operate by the gifts of the Spirit. Then you come to the place where sometimes the Spirit is down and then you stir the Spirit. But I want you to know, subsequent to receiving the Holy Spirit, what you have to understand is, God wants us to come into sonship. And you can only do that by the Holy Spirit. Listen, the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit. That means you begin a walk in the Holy Spirit. And what the Holy Spirit does is, after you've been baptized, filled and anointed, the Holy Spirit brings you to a spiritual place where you are declared as the sons of God. Now don't worry about the gender matter because whether you're a man or a woman, you're still a son of God. Say hallelujah. The Bible says led, that word is a go. It really means to lead, lead along and bring. That means the Holy Spirit must work in your life until you become a son of God, as he says. The place where you get to become the sons of the living God. I want you to know, my friends, you have not achieved anything until you come to the place where you can declare in your spirit and know that you are the son of God. You can jump and dance all you want. You can speak in tongues, splutter, roll, perform signs and wonders and miracles, but it doesn't work until you recognize the relationship with God that you can get up every day and say, I I am a son. I am a son of the living God. You see, my friends, that's the ultimate work of the Holy Spirit of God. You can call fire down from heaven. I see these programs on TV. You can do what you want. You can let people get on fire and roll and split, spit and splutter and do anything else. God bless them. But you must come to the place where you recognize that you're the son of God. Say hallelujah. You see, my beloved, Jesus received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in John 3, he had the Spirit without measure. That means you couldn't measure the power of the Holy Spirit. But it also tells us, as you read the Gospels, the Father said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Greek word is huios, spelled H-U-I-O-S. There's another word, technon, but all of these, my beloved, are very important to you not the Greek and the Hebrew but the fact that you are a son of God you will agree with me today that what much of what is passed on in the world is childish and whimsical but people have to come to maturity and understand that they are the sons of God and that is by the spirit of the living God say hallelujah in the name of Jesus come on say hallelujah so if you're a son of God and I'm a son of God and we're all sons of God, that means God is my father. Hallelujah. Everybody say father. You see, my beloved, he's not your father. You're not a son unless he becomes your father. And the Greek word for that is pater. It really means the one who nourishes you. That means you're coming to a place, my beloved, where you understand that he is the nourisher. And in the Old Testament, he's called Abba or Ab, Father. Are you hearing me? If you're a son, he's got to be Father. The 15th verse says, you have received the spirit of adoption. You cry, Abba, Father. And then, and the message Bible says, God's spirit touches our spirit. We know who he, he is and he knows who we are. God knows we are sons. We know that he's the father. Say hallelujah this morning. We are sons. That means we must be able to exclaim. We must be able to praise and say our father. 
God is my father. The Bible says we are connected with him by adoption. I want you to know that in this passage here, Paul is not referring to the Hebrew connotation of adoption. He's talking about the Greek and Roman connotations where you have the spirit of adoption. And that real word really is something different. Uh, uh, it's, it's weothesia. That's the word. You don't need to worry about that. Weothesia is a word adoption. You'll find it has weos in it. That means sons. But listen to this. Matthew Henry says this, and I quote, Adoption, when thus legally performed, puts a man in every respect in the position of a son by birth to him who had adopted him, adopted him so that he possessed the same rights and owed the same obligations as a natural son. And close quote. You know what Matthew Henry says? When you've adopted a child in this context here, in the Greek and Roman law, that child becomes yours and that child serves and receives fully all the rights and benefits and privileges that a natural born child receives. So God has given us everything in that word called adoption. We have to arrive at this sonship my beloved. I want you to know that this sonship is unique to the body of Christ. This is only true of our faith. The Jews did not know him as father. Any religion outside Christianity cannot tell you that there's a word that says that God is their father. Only in Christianity you can come and say, Abba, my father. That's why Jesus taught us how to pray. And he said, our father who art in heaven. Listen to one jo John chapter 1 and verse number 11. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become the sons of of God. My beloved, not everyone can call him father. Only those who are washed with the blood of Jesus, those that are baptized, and unless you're filled with the spirit, then you'll call him father. But outside of that, you don't know him as father. And you understand what God is saying when he says, you are uh, my sons. I want you to know that sometimes God cannot be your father. Listen to me. Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees. The Bible tells us in John chapter 8 because of their manner of behavior because of the things they did Jesus asked them who are you and what are you they said Abraham is our father he said to them you do not have Abraham as your father the devil is your father my beloved you either have God as your father or somebody else but you must come to the place where you understand you are sons of God and you understand that he is our father let me also just correct this. You see from 1995 onwards they had what they call was gender equality. You know what gender equality is? You know what gender equality is. It's not transgender people. Keep that out. Not LGBTQ community. No. This is gender equality. They said everybody must be treated right. So they have Bibles now and those Bibles say, oh God our father and mother. Are you hearing? God is not a mother. God is a father. You better get that straight. God is father. We address him as father. Why he does that, how he refers to himself, that's God. So that's just for your understanding. And you can become a, a son of God. You don't become a son of God by some religious act. Like somebody told me I'm the son of God. Or because somebody baptized me. Or somebody prayed for me. Listen, you become a son of God by adoption as God says. He brings us in and by the Holy Spirit. Say hallelujah. My friends, of all the things in your life, the best thing that happens can happen to you is you arrive at the place in your life where you know I do not belong to this world anymore. I am not a son of the devil. I'm not a son of my old habits. I'm a son of God and I have God as my father. So that every morning when you get up and you lift your hands to pray, you know who you're talking to. The man and above and you say my father and as you walk on the streets every day you're saying my father and somebody says you're alone in this life and you say my father that's the most explosive thing that can have ever happen in your life there is nothing like it you can buy a new house it doesn't compare with that you can buy a new car it doesn't compare with that you can get a degree it doesn't compare with that the best thing that can happen in your life is you get up and you say, I got God. Come on. 
He is my father. My father. That's who God is. When you recognize that, something is happening in your spirit. You get a hold of that, it's going to change your life. You get a hold of God of that, it's going to revolutionize you. And it can only come about by the spirit of the living God. Verse number 16. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children or the sons of God. There is something inside of me. There is something that comes from heaven and they both meet. There is a connection. There is a spark. There is a transmission. And it says, uh, I have a father and I am the son. Say hallelujah. Realize the fatherhood of God and God will help you. For a little while this morning, I want to unpack a little bit about this sonship that we have by the Holy Spirit. I suggest you read all of Romans chapter 8 and see what this sonship is about. But I want you to unpack a little bit, my beloved, and pray the Lord will bless you. Number one is, our sonship by the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with the flesh. Tell your neighbor, nothing to do with the flesh. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. So then those that are in the flesh cannot please God. Flesh meaning everything before you came to know Christ. Flesh meaning everything outside of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, verse 11, dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Oh my God, I have a natural body. For a while, this body is just like everybody else's body. But when the Holy Ghost comes in and I'm a son of God, this mortal body, body does not behave like the world anymore now my friend you don't only have a spirit change but your body changes as well somebody say hallelujah to the lord you see my friends you have a brand new dna because his spirit dwells in you your earthly father doesn't matter thank god for your earthly father say hallelujah thank god for them good fathers praise god for them but the bible says something happens you have the father's dna that means uh, your dna is what makes your defines you you know that very well it says who you are it gives gives you your behavior etc etc but the moment you come to the Lord the moment you discover Jesus the moment you're a son the DNA changes that means I behave differently that means everything is different in my life listen your natural parentage has no effect upon you when you become sons of God your lineage changes you still have an earthly father but something happens inside of you everybody say my DNA has changed are you with me that means you are different from your natural upbringing and your natural birth God is saying this to you listen that's why the Bible says you are no more under the flesh it says you have this you're the son of God you have the spirit of God sonship of God and not according walking according to the flesh anymore listen listen no man can you say my father was an alcoholic now I'm an alcoholic no more can you say, my father abused my mother, that's why I abused my wife. No more can you say, my father was a drug addict, he brought druggets to the house, that's why I'm like this. No more can you say, my father was a lazy man, I inherited his laziness. Lies! The psychiatrists and psychologists and, 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 and therapists make you sleep on the couches, for, for 500 rand an hour and tell you your parents were bad. We can tell you that for nothing. Your parents were bad. Your sons were bad. Your husband was bad. Lies! When you become a son of God, that thing is gone. That thing, what we have to do to them is say, you're suffering all these things. Don't come to me or Pastor Brian and tell us your parents were bad. We don't believe that. You know why? You're a son of God. Son of the Father. Your DNA has changed. And you ladies, don't say he's like his father. Because he's changed. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, they're blaming the fathers and mothers. You have a heavenly father. And listen, no, your natural environment Marshall, right? Leading role in the movie. Isn't that beautiful? Listen to me. As sons of God, my looks don't matter. What are you putting so much of cream for? You want to look differently. I was trying to get white. Uh, you, know, you know that worship team is a little prejudiced. I looked at them. I took a picture this morning. All of them are light-skinned. Uh, I don't know if they're prejudiced or what the problem You know, this, this young he's she said, you better tell me, am I ugly or am I pretty? And this was, she kept on pesting him. And girls do that. Keep on pesting him. Am I ugly? Am I pretty? Am I ugly? Am I pretty? He said to her, you are both. <laughs> she said, what do you mean? He said, you are pretty ugly. <laughs> so I don't know. Sometimes you worry about the way you look. Don't worry about that. So, sonship, listen to me. <laughs> nothing to do with anybody here. Our sonship by the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with the flesh. Hallelujah. Our son sonship by the Holy Spirit will have a dramatic change upon all creation. You know what the Bible says? Creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Creation, meaning everything that God's created, is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Verse number 19, that's it. You see, my beloved, when Adam fell, there was a curse upon the face of the earth. And the Bible tells us thorns and thistles began to grow. Adam was the son of God, but he lost that glory of God. And the Bible says whole, the whole of creation is groaning. Even we groan in this body. That's what the Bible says. But you see what it says is that the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Uh, listen to this, this verse. It says, against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. What God is saying is, we have an effect on the environment. We can change everything around us. When we become sons of God, we'll alter the environment. Creation will change. Have you not noticed that a lot of Christians are at the forefront of what God is doing and trying to clean up the environment? But the Bible tells us, when the sons of God are manifested, when they've come forth on the face of the earth, when the sons of God reveal themselves and we become true sons of God, even nature and creation will be completely changed. You see, my friends, Adam was given the task for carrying the garden, for care, taking care of the garden. But the Bible says he lost that. And then all evil set in. Uh, why does the Bible say, when you follow the Lord, Psalm number one, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Brings forth his fruit in his seasons. His leaf also shall not wither. Whatever he does shall prosper. He says, man, you will flourish like the trees. But you know what that is? That is a metaphor of what God can do around him. And God can bless the creation. There's a story. You must go and read this. 
you must go and re read this. In uh, Fiji, uh, Thomas Baker, Navatusila in 1867. Hear this. Uh, you can read this and I'll just uh, give you a brief uh, uh, idea about what happened there. Uh, a missionary, uh, here's his name, Thomas Baker, went to uh, the Fiji Islands and uh, he was preaching the gospel there. And what had happened, for some reason he offended them. And what they did was, they killed him. They killed him, they cut him up, they boiled him and they ate him. And what had happened was for many years, the islands were dry, nothing was happening, barren, etc., etc. All the maladies you can think about in terms of what would happen. And, and they were suffering. And somebody, Christians got together and said to them, there's a whole movie about this, and said to them, listen, we must repent for having killed that missionary. They got hold of their, the missionaries' descendants, invited them over to the island, had a great service, repented, made restitution. They gave them stuff and said, we're sorry this happened. And the islands that have been uh, with drought for many years, etc., etc. After they did the repentance, and after they made right with the descendants of the man that was boiled and killed there, they, they say that a few Days later, the rains began to fall. The island began to flourish again. You know why? Go and read that story about the Fiji. Thomas Baker. Read the full story. And it was because God's people had turned back to him. I'm telling you, God will bless you. You know, they say some people got green hands. Not green hands. These are sons of God. They touch something. You know, some people, you give them flowers. When you look at it, you ask, who knocked this thing over? There are other people, you give them the scrappiest flowers and something happens to it. Are you hearing me? They've got a touch. It's not a touch. It's the sons of God. How can you make scones and nobody wants to eat it because they tried to cut it with a hacksaw? And somebody makes a scone and they say, oh my God, did this come from Woolies? Isn't it nice? You got something. You're a child of God. Just remember, when it's going out through beautifully, you see it's because God's hand. Of course, there are some people who can't cook. Go and bless them as well. Thirdly, our sonship by the Holy Spirit assures us that our hardships are never in vain. You see, when you're a son of God, outside the sonship of God, you can't understand suffering. If we suffer with him, we may also be glorified with him. I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed to us. My friends, we can't understand pain. Oh my God, you can't understand pain. I don't know why. Ask Veloz, she'll tell you how we can. Ask Pastor Brian, they'll tell you. We can't understand the testing. We ask God, why me? We can't understand death illness limitations you know we shout and complain and curse scream and throw tantrums no one can offer any comfort my friend but God says the sufferings of this present time are not worthy only when you're a son you understand if you're not a son you leave church you run away from life all our sufferings will result in a blessing. There's glory coming to us. In this life, we see the blessings through suffering. In the life to come, we will see the blessings of our God. Let me tell you, your suffering, you're going to have the last laugh. Are you with me? You're going to have the last laugh. Your suffering will pain. You listen, there's a verse that says there, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them that love God. You'll never understand it until you know he's your father. Because your father will say, I'm not giving you the car. He knows why. Are you hearing? He'll tell you, you must finish your college first. He knows. Only when you're a son, you understand all things work together for good. Otherwise, you will keep shouting, complaining to everyone. And when the Father says it's working for your good, 
understand it. Right now, there are so many people here. Your marriage may have broken up. You may be hurting for something or the other. You're carrying a weight this morning. I want you to know, don't worry about those sufferings. When you're a son, you have a father. You know my father, he's doing this. Doesn't matter. He didn't give me the car today, but he's still my father. He'll help me. Are you with me? And God, no one can convince us that good is coming out of it. And many things happen. Injury, loss. But oh, it's working out for good. You know why? I know my father. Hallelujah. Our sonship by the Holy Spirit assures us that our hardships are not in vain in the Lord. I'll tell you what, it's coming. Tell your neighbor it's coming. Your blessings are coming. And then, fourthly this morning, the sonship by the Holy Spirit. And I got some time. Adds momentum to our prayer and intercession. Say momentum, come on. Hey, praying is hard, eh? Praying is very hard. I told you about the fellow I had in college with me and I stayed at residence one night and in the, he said he's going to kneel down the whole night and pray at the bottom of the bed. But the morning we got up and we found him sleeping. And we asked what happened. He said, I didn't get slain by the Holy Spirit. I got slain by sleep. How many of you that happened to you? Ah, uh, yeah, holy people. Not one, Sharon, ever. After baking the whole day. Praying becomes tedious. You know, you get tired praying. Sometimes you don't know what you're praying. They wear out. People can't pray. People make resolutions. I'm going to get up every morning and pray at 5 a.m. God, give me that wife. After the wife comes, he is not worried at all about her. He goes, you know. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that's, that's, that's what happens. Uh, and, 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 and I'm praying the Lord will bless you today. And the Lord will help you. So, uh, this fellow's name is Bob. And then uh, he offended his wife. And his wife was very, very upset with him. And he said to his, and his wife said to him, tomorrow morning, by midday tomorrow, I want to see something parked in the driveway that goes from not to 206 seconds. She said, if not, you're in trouble. The next day she saw a box parcel lying in the driveway. She went, she opened it. She found a bathroom scale. <laughs> Bob has been missing for two weeks now. <laughs> so I don't know. Bob has been missing. If you meet him, tell him his wife is waiting. You forget about things to pray. Sometimes you don't know how to pray. How do you pray when there's illness? How do you pray when there's divorce? How do you pray when there's failure? You don't know how to pray. The Bible says the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We don't know how we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. My beloved, the sonship in our lives, the Holy Spirit's sonship, gives momentum to our prayers. When you can't pray, God helps you to pray. When you don't know what to pray about, God helps you to, and teaches you what to pray about. And the Bible says, you, you make groanings which cannot be uttered. You know, my friends, sometimes there's a point in your life you don't know what to pray. You just say, ah, God, oh, God, my God. God understands all of that. When you can't pray and you're a son of God, you understand that he's your father. There's a groaning inside and God allows you to pray. And let me tell you this morning that there are some things that you think you never prayed for, but God brings them to you. There's some things you don't understand. God opens the door. You know why? In your weaknesses as a son of God, as, his, as, a, as him being your father, you have prayed. You didn't know what to pray. 
you've just made the groanings but God has blessed you and God gave you the desires of your heart that's why you have to keep on praying pray every morning pray every afternoon pray in the evening when there's a prayer meeting at church get together when women are praying or men are praying you get together you know why because the spirit gives us momentum because we are the sons of God and lastly let me say this this morning my beloved our sonship by the Holy Spirit brings us into a place of triumphant lifestyle you see you will get victory you'll get victory um, you know some people receive victories and you get this a lot of people want victory um, uh, uh, and 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 uh, and uh, want victory over victory and another victory and they say today I got my blessing I'm waiting for a new blessing etc etc victory must become your lifestyle not once in a while then you're putting on Facebook hey everybody got this thing here you're standing with your car I hope none of you got that the ribbons are there and you're cutting the ribbons but you're worried now I'm gonna pay for this thing here you're cutting the ribbons you're cutting the ribbons you got a big smile but behind that smile you're wondering now at least with a mask you can't see the smile that is the plus sign you want a lifestyle of triumph every day you'll be happy you're blessed every day you must come to a place where God will bless you every day then you must come to a place where you'll be giving every day <laughs> say hallelujah are you hearing what shall we say to these things what shall we say to these things he says we're living a life of triumph because we're the sons of God and let me tell you what we said already we said you're the sons of God and number one is this I said our sonship by the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with the flesh and number two I said our sonship by the Holy Spirit will have a dramatic change upon all creation around us number three I said our sonship by the Holy Spirit assures us that our hardships are never in vain and number four I said our sonship by the Holy Spirit adds momentum to our prayer and lastly our sonship by the Holy Spirit brings us into a place of triumphant lifestyle I want you to live well I want you to live blessed and you can get up every morning God is my father somebody knows that he owns the cattle on a thousand hills Haggai says the gold is yours the silver is yours the Bible says God says I'll make you the head and not the tail I'll keep you above and not beneath I'll bless you in the city I'll bless you in the country I'll bless the work of your hands and I'll bless everything that you do and he says if you walk in his way then there's no curse that can, can come upon you I want you to put up your shoulders get your chest out you understand that he is father and you are the son and every day when you get up you don't curse your life you say my father knows what I need because if he can provide for the birds of the air he can take care of the cattle in the field he can take care of the flowers of the field he can bless me and God can help me he is my father before I can ask him my father knows what I need and my father will have it ready for me when I've sinned I can go back to my father he'll give me the robe he'll give me the ring he'll put sandals on my feet he'll give me the beautiful calf and God will bless me when I go to my father my father will equip me and help me you know why he is my father I belong to him I come out of his loins and I can truly say I'm the son of God the way I live the things I do and all these things and Paul sums it up and says yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us that means because of his love I am the son and he is the father and then he says I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels principalities powers things present things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus nothing you can do to me will change the fact that God is my father you can talk about us all you want but God remains a father you can lie about people you can scandalize about them you can take away what they got but there's one thing you can't do is take away the fact that God 
He is our Father. Every morning I'm up. Hello, Father. Every night I sleep. Good night, Father. When the troubles are there, I'm talking to my Father. When nobody can help me, everybody closes their doors. My Father's door will always be open. He is my Father. I am a son of God. That's it. Period. Nothing less, nothing more. Husband, do what you want. Wife, do what you want. Evil people, boss, do what you want. Want to kick me out? Want to take my car back? Whatever else, he is still my father. I am his child best thing in your life that the sons of God he is the father. I'll tell you what, pastor you know this there are nights I lie on the floor in our lounge and I cry and I cry and I cry. All the things that happen in my life I cry and very shortly the tears go he says I'm here I'm here. And I get up, wipe the tears out. Next morning, I'm back on the go. Reggie will tell you there was a time in our lives, him and another dear friend of ours, I shut myself in the house for two weeks, didn't want to go anywhere, do anything. So black, life was black. And him came to the house, said, Kennedy, come on, you can't stay like this. Get up, shave, bath, do these things. God help us get along. Somebody who knows he's the father will prop you up. Prop you up. Don't let anybody steal that from you. I'm gonna pray this morning. Come, Shelda. You can't join anybody's hands. I wish you could. You're an orphan this morning. Parents have died. Some of you, somebody's thrown you out. Don't want you in the house anymore. You have no one to turn to. He is here. He is our Father. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Sing that song you sang. And we'll ask the Father here, Pastor Brian, to pray for us this morning. I have a Father. I'm talking to lonely people today. I'm talking to people who are hurting. I'm talking to people who have lost everything. I'm talking to people who don't know what tomorrow will bring. Yes, he knows. with me thank you dear Lord for this awesome word that we heard today we thank you for blessing our hearts with your word how true your word is we stand before you in our total weakness we bow before you here today acknowledging that you are a holy God but we are so thankful thankful dear Lord that you have adopted us we thank you that you brought us out from where we were we thank you for your spirit that is in us we thank you oh God 
we bear witness that we are the children of the Most High God. We bear witness. It's not because of who we are, because of the spirit that is in us. It's a spirit, Lord, that is in us that makes this confession. Oh God, we thank you for this. We bless you for this. We praise you for this. My God, indeed, it is the spirit that is in us that cries out, Abba, Abba, Father. It's a spirit. And we thank you for the spirit that you gave to us. But Lord, your word says, those that are led by the spirit, those that are led by the spirit, we thank you, Father, for your word, because your word is spirit. And we know, Lord, when we are led by the spirit, we are led by your word. And Lord, what can come against us when we're walking in and through your word? Who can come against us? My God, we will be more than conquerors. Because of who you are, we'll be more than conquerors. We thank you this morning. We bless you this morning. My God, we can be lifted up this morning because of who you are. We know your presence is here. We know your hand is here. Oh God, we love you. We cherish you. We bless and praise you. Oh, hallelujah, we say. We say hallelujah to the King of Kings. We say hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. Oh my God, you are our Father. Not only our Father, you are the Creator. My God, all things belong to you. Lord, as a Father, and we, be, we being your sons and daughters, everything that you have belongs to us because we are your children. Oh, hallelujah. I pray today in the name of Jesus that you'll open our eyes, that we may be able to see all the great things yes, that you have in store yes, for us. Yes, yes, yes. Open our eyes, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Because everything that belongs to you, we are your children. We have inherited it, oh God, because we are your children. Amen. It belongs to us. Oh, hallelujah. You're a good God. You're a great God. None can compare with you. None will be able to stand before you. Oh, what an awesome father you are. What a great father you are. We can walk with boldness. Yes, we can yes, go wherever yes. we want to go. Yes. Not because of who we are, because of who you are. Yes, father. Yes. We will be able to overcome. We will overcome, oh God, because of the greatness of our father. No, all the ways will be open for us. No matter how difficult the road Amen. may be, the road will be open because the father goeth before his children. Hallelujah. If anybody makes a way, you will make a way. We love you today. We bless and praise you. How wonderful, Lord, when your son was there after baptism. You said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. We we'll raise our hands to you today. And beloved Father God, thank you. Thank you that you're looking at us. You know us by name. You know every thought Amen. that is in us. You know everything about us, oh God. We thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. And Lord, we hear a voice coming to us. A voice saying, this is my beloved son. Yes. This yes. is my beloved daughter. Hallelujah. My God. This is why we want to worship you. This is why we want to praise you. This is why we want to give you glory. We want to just lift up your name. Because we know who we are. The sons and the children of the Most High God. Bless us today. Oh God, you just strengthened us with your word today. You inspired us. You lifted us up from where we were. We thank you this morning. Hallelujah. We say great is the Lord and greatly shall the Lord be praised. Continue to bless us, Father. Continue to bless this congregation. Have your hand upon your son today. We share thy word. Just bless him in a special way, Father, even as we commit him to you. We ask all this in that wonderful, sweet name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God's people said, Amen. He knows my name. He knows, he knows my, my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and eats me when I go. Lord, I praise you may be seated this morning. Thank you, Pastor, for praying over us this morning. Tuesday night, there's a prayer at 7 o'clock. Please come. And uh, Wednesday, there's an intercession here at 10 a.m. Everybody's welcome. 
The school opens tomorrow, 15th March. Please remember that. You can just come for a visit as well. Seniors, 18th March at 10 a.m. They have a meeting here with the senior citizens. Ladies, prayer Thursday night, 18th at 7 p.m. Ladies only prayer. Men's fellowship, 26th March. There's a baptism on the 4th of April at, uh, at half past eight. And then Easter weekend, we have services. Don't forget this evening at five, we're going to be here. The Lord bless you. We're going to receive your tithes and offerings this morning. There's a card machine at the back and then the place will be sanitized. We hope you'll come through and leave by these uh, front exits. Now may, his, now may his grace and mercy and peace be ours through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you this morning.